This is Shining Force. I've just done a week's worth of games that aren't Shining Force, despite having Shining, or even Shining Force, in their titles. But they aren't Shining Force. Closest one among them was Mario Golf, for crying out loud. Shining Force changed my life. Shining Force was a burst of light, a beam of hardcore tactics and technicolor hairstyles into the drab hinterlands of northern Pennsylvania. I didn't know what to make of it back in 1993, but I knew it was the start of something big. This game would single-handedly inform my tastes for decades. And it all started with an elf girl and a book. As an up-and-coming swordsman training under the venerable Lord Varius, you're given a chance to make a name for yourself by fighting off the hordes of Runefaust, who are presently attacking that huge mysterious gate outside of town. What's on the other side has been lost to the ages, point being that whoever sealed it didn't want anyone to know. Lovely. After dispatching these interlopers and remembering to pick up Gung the Monk over at the nearby cabin, and going through rough terrain and another batch of foes to make it through to your now ransacked home, your quest begins through eight chapters of battlefields, cities, and odd characters to recruit as you travel the world to thwart Dark Souls machinations. Oh, what a cast of characters it is. Centaurs all over the place, birdmen and women, Domingo the proto-tentacle, elves and dwarves as per contractual obligations, a cyborg, a dragon, a ninja, an old dude in a rickety flying contraption, a werewolf, a were-llama, I think that's what Chris is, archers, knights, warriors, mages, and a freaking armadillo in a steam-powered battle suit. Now that's what I call diversity. The mechanics are fairly basic by today's standards. Move your dudes around the map, beat down enemies, get to the other side with as few fatalities as possible. It's a formula that's been recreated time and again since then, and, well, let's be fair, it's alarmingly similar to Fire Emblem. There are a number of differences, though, starting off with the fact that you could actually get Shining Force in the States. Death isn't really a terminal thing in this game, either. It's one of the few JRPGs where churches aren't the enemy by default. While Sakuraba wouldn't be a part of the equation until Shining Force 3, the soundtrack takes full advantage of the hardware with strong bass, pulsing drums, and high fanfares that, despite your hearing them a billion times per fight, suitably convey the gravity of the situation. The art is also a high note, as the bright colors and very anime-styled characters were atypical for a US release in 93. Well, once you look past the box art, anyway. Eight-year-old me wondered why that was the case, and I'm still looking for more and better answers. So if you're familiar with the current spate of tactical RPGs and want something a bit more retro, well, you've got options. This game's available on almost every platform Sega ever published on, from the Genesis original to the Dreamcast on a Smash Pack to the Wii Virtual Console to the PS3 and 360 and Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection to Steam, and it'll probably see re-re-re-release another dozen times. How many of those other quote-unquote shining games can claim that? I didn't think so. Heck, Shining Force was even the recipient of that rarest of boons, a remake that didn't completely suck. Just search the deep archives here at CGR for Resurrection of Dark Dragon for the GBA and you'll see what I mean. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta go party like it's 1993. That's right, I'm busting out the Taco Doritos and Snapple and throwing on the Aladdin soundtrack. See if I don't. <laughs>